Oh, it's finally come time to do Hodge theory. But let me put this in uh, context. So we're basically talking about periods first. And let me make <coughs> of mixed Hodge tape. The, um, th this word is not really standard uh, structures. <coughs> so periods is a sort of well-known concept. I'll say a few words about that. Uh, mixed Hodge structures is a standard thing. And mixed Hodge tape structures have a longer name and a shorter definition. And that's all that's relevant to us here. And so it's easier to understand. But you have to put up with a longer name. So <clears throat> let me make a remark about periods. So here's something that often happens in arithmetic geometry. You have, um, so, and I'll take a very special case. In arithmetic geometry, you may be studying some variety, like we are p1 minus 0 on an infinity. And you may have some invariant, like the fu unipotent fundamental group or this truncated group ring. And you get two rational ve vector spaces. So this leads you into uh, two rational vector spaces. And I'll call one VQ. And I'll call the other one V, well, I'll just call it V. And the other one I'll call V Dharam, DR for Dharam. And, and you have an isomorphism. <clears throat> if you complex, and when I complexify something, if I write V sub C, it means I just tensor it with C over the, whatever the, uh, over Q. Such so that this thing here is isomorphic to V C Dharam. Right? So let me give you a simple example. Um, we've got one right in front of us. So let's look at uh, example is to take V to be, again, take, take U to be equal to P1 minus, uh, say, infinity A1 AN, or just 0, 1, and infinity, if you like. And now take um, V to be equal to uh, HOM, say, Q pi 1 of U some base point mod J to the m plus 1 into Q, so the dual of this. And <clears throat> the other vector space, V to Ram, to be equal to the set of, um, well, length m of the Q linear combinations of the integral Wj1, Wjr, so where Wjr, so Wj is just dz of uh, z minus aj. <clears throat> oh, and here, sorry, I want to take the aj to be in Q. OK, so I've got a variety defined over Q. And then all these differential forms are sort of Q rational, right? And then if I take Q linear combinations of them, I get a rational vector space. And I've also got another ra rational vector space. This one comes from topology. And now VC, VC is equal to just uh, as harm C pi 1 UX into C. And VC Dharam is equal to all the complex linear combinations of these, right? Uh, is equal to the LM of what I call Chen, something like, I uh, can't remember, H0 omega 1 log S, you know, whatever, whatever I called it. The, basically, the iterated integrals built up out of these guys. And then we have an integration map uh, going this way. So maybe I should have made my isomorphism go this way. Doesn't matter. It can go either way. And so this is my phi. So this is integration. So typically, this map here is given by integration. Now, if you have, so what's a period of this? So this is, so this is 
a prototypical example. And uh, what's a period of this situation? Well, what's a period over here? You could choose a Q basis over here. So you could have a Q basis, say, uh, V1 up to Vd is a Q basis. So you take a basis of this guy and just view as a complex basis here, and you take, say, a, a Q basis here, say, E1, ED, as, a, as a, a Q basis over here, and they're related by a matrix. And the entries of, if the two rational structures coincide, that matrix will be a ra matrix of rational numbers. But if they don't coincide, then there'll be, there'll be some matrix which will have complex entries which will tell you how the two rational structures differ from each other, right? And that's some sort of period matrix. And typically, in, in this situation here, um, so let me just, so is that sort of clear enough? Sort of the periods tell, it, it's a matrix which would tell you basically how to express V1 up to Vd. It would be equal to some matrix, some complex matrix times E1 Ed. Right. And the entries of this matrix are called periods. Or strictly speaking, we should maybe take linear combinations of them, which will correspond to what would happen if we chose different rational bases here. Right? They're not completely well defined. And another way to think about this is we could have, say, um, we could look at V here, and we could include, say, Q in here by taking, say, 1 to some rational element. So C is an element of V. And then we have the isomorphism with V Duram C. And now we could have V Duram and we could choose a linear functional here, say C, into Q. That'll give us a map here into C, right? So we're just thinking of, um, so a matrix entry of some linear transformation somewhere is always of this form. You include a vector, you, you take the linear transformation, and then you compose with a linear functional. That's what a matrix entry is, right? So in our case here, you get matrix entries in this situation by uh, taking something in the rational group ring and evaluating an iterated integral on it. So in this case here, the per so this is what a period is. So a period is one goes to period, right? Because one goes to this constant, and that, so the period is equal to C evaluated on C. And here, if you think about it a little bit, the periods of this situation are integrals of, say, omega J1, omega JR over um, C, where C is an element of Q pi 1. I guess here I've reversed the role of the two things, but it doesn't matter, u x mod j to the m plus 1. So is that sort of clear enough? So that's what periods are. So we're going to be looking at integrals of rational linear combinations of these guys over rational cycles. And the two rational structures come from topology in this case, and in this case they come from a sort of algebraic Durham theorem. The fact that all the differentials we're using come from algebraic geometry, and in fact, they're all defined over the field of definition. Okay. Uh, yeah? I think this is correct, but the way you wrote it, it's not entirely obvious, because if you take two, this wrong structure, if you take these two linear combinations and you're still regarding them as functions on path space, and it's a priori not clear that you don't get relations here, there might be things here which are not related. Okay. In, in the notes, I will clarify. There was a point yesterday, actually, where I, I was not right, but I'll clarify this. Uh, but no, but in this case, these guys are a, These guys form a complex basis of the complex guy, and so far they're linear, therefore they're linearly independent over Q. When you take Q linear combinations, you get a Q form. It's okay. In this case, I agree. I mean, it's not true in general. All right, so let me talk about, um, but, but we want, we're going to put more structure. On, on, on these guys, for example, on V, we're going to put two things. One is a weight filtration. And the other thing is a Hodge filtration. 
And so let me, and when, when we put these things on here, we're going to get what's known as a mixed hard structure. But we're going to get a very, in our case, we're going to get a very special one. It's going to be one whose weight graded quotients are said to be Tate. And without knowing it, you've been encountering Tate mixed hard structures for the last couple of days, both or, or, the, or the Galois analog. So let me explain this. And it's always a little bit of a mouthful. And I've tr uh, tried to strip this down as much as possible. So definition, a mixed uh, Hodge-Tate structure. So maybe I'll give this a name, a mixed Hodge-Tate structure. <laughs> it's a lot to write. Um, well, I'm going to take lambda, first of all, to be equal to z or q. I could just stick with q, say. It's convenient to have both. Right? But it's just, and, and there are more things I could take it to be, but these two are the relevant ones in the situation. And I should really say a lambda mixed Hodge-Tate structure. <clears throat> so, consists of one, a finitely generated lambda module. So, in this case over here, my lambda is Q, and this is my finite dimensional Q vector space. I, if I wanted an integral version, I would have just taken hum of the integral group ring into here. And then I would get a, I would be defining a, a Z mixed hard state <laughs> structure. The second thing is I have an increasing weight filtration. Well, it's an increasing filtration, which is called the weight filtration. Uh, so it'll be W, um, and it's in this, because we're in the Tate situation, everything is even. There, so I'll just now I follow Deline's conventions because they work out very nicely. When a filtration is increasing, you put the index down the bottom. When it's decreasing, you put it at the top. So VQ means V lambda tensed with Q. So if lambda were Q, there's nothing to do. But if you're looking at an integral mixed hard structure, the weight filtration is not defined integrally. In fact, that's a sort of, it's a minor peccadillo that, I mean, minor mistake that people have in a lot of papers in the literature. They, try, they claim that the weight filtration is defined over Z. And I'll say later why that's just not the case, even though if it looks like it is. Sorry? Ah, sorry, yeah, so V. <clears throat> and uh, three, a decreasing Hodge filtration. It's a, so I should really say uh, filtration, which is called the Hodge filtration. <coughs> of VC. So it's going to, cons it's going to be FP VC. Again, it's a decreasing filtration, so by Deline's convention, you put the index on the top. Now, in the way I'm setting it up, I don't need to say this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, what happens is the intersection of these guys is zero, and the union is the whole thing. Same over there. So the filtration, <coughs> it can't stop before you get to the whole vector space, and the intersection of these guys is always zero. And I'll say it here, although it's going to get a bit annoying later on because P is going to be negative, but, in, but somehow, heuristically, FP a V means uh, greater than or equal to P DZs. Think of that, that. When you've got some sort of holomorphic coordinate floating around, it's going to be relevant when we look at iterated integrals because they have DZs in them. And you'll figure out the Hodge filtration by counting the number of DZs. When we look at the dual, it's not going to make sense because the Hodge filtration will have negative indices. And it's okay. I mean, and if you 
feel like it gets a little complicated when we dualize these things. I should say that it's always fun when you sort of read somebody's papers and you think they're an incredible expert on something and then you ask them a question and you see them counting on their fingers and drawing little dots. The first time I spoke to Deline, I asked him a question about negative, you know, whether these things are negative. He has to take out a piece of paper, you know, he invented the thing and everything he writes is very clear, but he's drawing little dots on the paper and, you know, just to figure out what, the, what all the indices should be. So you don't have to feel bad if you don't get it right. You just have to understand how to do it by counting on your fingers and so on. All right, so these are required to satisfy. These satisfy. And I should say this is a mouthful, but we have a great example sitting in front of you. So I'll immediately give you an example after this, and it should, everything should be clear. So you require that Vc is equal to the direct sum over m of f m v c intersected w 2 m v c. Now the weight filtration I can always extend it up to c right from q. The weight I have to stress the weight filtration is always has to be defined over q but it exists over the complex part. Okay that's that's the requirement. So you've got this vector space so you've got this lattice v lambda or v it's got an increasing filtration called the weight filtration of its rational form and it's got a decreasing filtration called the Hodge filtration that satisfies this. And so I'll make a remark at this stage. I'm actually going to change the order in the notes because I think it'll be conceptually clearer. Um, set VMM equal to this guy here. So it's going to be equal to FMVC intersected with W2MVC. It's an exercise in the notes to show that <laughs> so this is a bigrading, but I stress this bigrading only exists over the complex numbers on the complex form. Not, well, if it exists rationally, the mixed Hodge structure is going to be not so mixed. It's going to be a direct sum of pure guys. So then, and this is an exercise in the notes, that W2M is equal to of VC, so is equal to the direct sum of the V say r, r, r equal to a less than m. <coughs> and fp vc is equal to the direct sum uh, s greater than, well, r greater than or equal to, to p of v, r, r. So if you somehow think of these things as differential forms with r disease in them, then this is saying FP says you have at least P disease, right? And, it, and the weight of this VRR is 2R, right? So the weight filtration, the things of weight equal to a less than 2M will be the things where R is equal to a less than M here. And the origin of this comes from sort of standard Hodge theory where a Hodge structure has a, is some vector space with a bigrading. And, in this case, if you have a Tate Hodge structure, it's always of type PP. But anyway, this is just formal. So this is just a, a remark. Are they speaking in the filtration? Are they speaking over all? Are they speaking over all here or just finite number? Uh, no, they go over all integers. I mean, of course, the filtrations, because we're in the finitely generated situation, it's just, uh, it's just a f effectively, it's a finite filtration. After a finite number of steps, you get down to zero. And after a finite number of steps, you get up to the whole thing. That's right. And in fact, it's this condition that I wrote up. I didn't state that as an assumption because it's implied by this condition. And that's an exercise in the notes. If the filtrations, these didn't intersect in zero, then I, I wouldn't get all of VC, for example. But you can assume, if you like, these guys intersect in zero and the union's the whole thing. Likewise with the Hodge filtration. So let's look at an example. So I should point out for the time being, I'm forgetting this arithmetic version I said before where the complex vector space has another Q structure. We're just dealing with a good old fashioned mixed Hodge state structure. So let's take, so V is going to be, and I'll take lambda equals Z, and V is going to be hom, Again, same u, u as before, u is equal to p1 minus s, where s was the set we took. It's going to be hom z pi 1 ux, 
And x is just any old rat base point, say m plus 1 into z. And um, I'll set, so let's see. So what's the weight filtration? So the weight filtration is going to be, I have to, so vq is, of course, equal to hom of the same thing into q. I can put a q there if I want to as well. It doesn't really matter. And now, what's the weight filtration? So uh, w2m, oops, yeah, I better use another letter. Maybe I'll use n here. So w2n uh, of, of vq is equal to hom, uh, it's a, uh, say q pi 1, you, I think I'll get, the, well again, uh, mod the things that vanish on the n plus first thing. So the filtration j is decreasing, which is going to make this an increasing filtration. But if you hang on a sec, the complex filtration is going to be a lot easier to see. So what's, so what's VC? VC, well, it's really equal to hom of this, you know, z pi 1 ux mod j to the m plus 1 into c. But by Chen's Durham theorem, this is the same as saying it's it's the iterated integrals uh, these algebraic iterated integrals right it's these guys here so this is this is the set of all C linear combinations of these guys oh and I should say it's really L M of that the things of length equal to a less than M so it's sums of these where r is equal to less than m, right? And so what's, what's the weight filtration? What's w, uh, what's w2n of vc? Well, the chens Durham theorem tells you that this guy here is exactly realized by the iterated integrals of length equal to a less than n, right? So this is going to be the weight filtration is essentially the filtration by length of C H. So this is for n equal to or less than m. Chan of all of this guy here. Is that okay? And so. Ah, sorry. This is m. Hold it. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. So this is l n. Yeah, because I chose. Yeah. And this is equal to or less than n. And so W2M is equal to this, where M is equal to less than N. What have I done here? My original thing has an N here, right? And so my whole VC will be the iterated integrals of length equal to less than N. Ah, you want this here? Am I okay now? Yeah. Uh, and I want length m here. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think I need to write. Okay. Uh, w m is equal to a less than. Yeah. I. I okay. A little dyslexic here, right? All right. So is it clear enough now? But anyway, but but you see here, and it's true in every situation. Once at least you beat your head enough against the wall, the weight filtration is. Um, is something very natural, right? Just given by length. And in fact, it's topological because it's corresponding to the filtrations by the power of the maximal ideal in the group ring. So it's clearly topological. The weight fil this is not exactly true, but it's not a, bad, not a bad first approximation to say the weight filtration is topological. And it is here. It's topologically defined. The, the next thing is what about the Hodge filtration? Well, FP of v, c, is equal to the iterated integrals with at least p dz's. What does that mean? They have length at least p. And I said before, and I will revise the notes to make it very clear, that in this case, but not in general, the iterated integrals are graded. What you see is what you get. Two of these expressions are equal if and only if they're formally equal, right? So this is going to be equal to the set of integral sums of things wj1 
WJR, uh, where R is greater than or equal to P, because each one of these contains one DZ, right? And so, and in fact, what's V um, R R? It's just equal to, it's equal to W 2 R intersected with uh, F R. So these are the things of length, length le equal to or less than R. And these are the guys with length equal, greater than or equal to R. So this is equal to the set of sums of things integral W J1, W, J, R of length exactly R. Right? And you can see here that you can check these formulas I wrote up earlier. These ones here, where are they? Um, that, did I, ah, these guys here, that the weight filtration satisfies this. It's saying the weight 2M stuff is the stuff where you add up all these guys with R equal to or less than M, and FP is where you add up all these guys with it a great. So this is a really good, simple, non-trivial example. It's good because it's, everything's transparent, and it's also good because it's non-trivial and interesting. So what is the MM with the two Sorry? What is the NM? V N N? NM, like the difference? Nothing. Ah, oh, See, so, yeah, because we're in the Tate situation. Ah, okay. So I mean, I mean, I'll say a little bit. What, what's, a, what's a Tate Hodge? You know, when you're looking at the cohomology, say, of a <laughs> compact Kähler manifold, you know, this is the direct sum of P plus Q equals K of H, P, Q, X, right? If we look at the complex cohomology, right? And so this is the prototypical pure Hodge structure of weight K. Now, the ones that are Tate are the ones where P and Q are equal. And we're in the Tate situation. I mean, I could define the whole thing, but I'd spend an extra lecture and there'd be no gain because it's not relevant. It's just a lot harder to understand. And so basically everything we've got is of type PP. And so <clears throat> let me give you another example. So we get, we get to everything when we take uh, M here equal to N. <coughs> Sorry? Um, if I put pi 1 hat here, or I put this, it makes no difference. Right? Just like taking a power series ring, and if you mod out by the fifth power of the maximal ideal, it's the same as taking the corresponding polynomial ring and modding out by the fifth power of the maximal ideal. So, so, okay, so let me give you another example. And this is a trivial example, but it may help clarify things. Let's look at, uh, let's look at, say, lambda n. So this is, the, so in other words, we're going to look at z of n and q of n. And maybe just so the lambda doesn't get in the way psychologically, I'll just concentrate on this one, just tensor with Q to get the other one, right? So what is this? It's, it, this is a, a one-dimensional uh, mixed Hodge-Tate structure. And it's going to be what's called pure. And I'm going to, and if I just give you the bigrading, it automatically determines the filtrations, right? So I'm going to say that, um, so, so I'll take V equal to this. So VC is going to just be equal to C. And it's going to be equal to V minus N minus N. So the first annoying thing about this is it has negative weight. But that's the right way to do this. <coughs> and so this determines the Hodgen weight filtrations. You'll have F minus N plus 1 equals 0 and F uh, minus n equals all of Vc, for example. And with the weight filtration, you'll have 0 equals weight minus 2m minus 2 contains w minus 2m equals Vq, right? And now what's the integral lattice? And it always seems odd, but it's going to become natural, and this is you see later on. It's the secret way of setting 2 pi i equal to 1. You know, everybody wants to set 2 pi i equal to 1. At least I do. So what's, what's v? v is equal to 
2 pi i z, and includes in like that. Sorry? Ah, sorry, 2 pi i to the n. Thank you. Uh, n is an element of z. Thank you. Okay, yeah. All right, there are little psychological quirks that we all have. <laughs> no, that's right. This one here has, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. So let, let's, and I should say, the, what's the Galois analog? Because you've already seen it. The Galois analog, let me just say, say the L adic version ZL of 1 is just simply equal to, or the L adic uh, analog. And this is just the L adic numbers, but it, you have to have an action of the Galois group, and it acts by the, the, the L adic cyclotomic character. So the Galois group, it's just a Galois module. And how does um, sigma take some x, and it just takes it into chi L sigma times x? And if you want ZL of n, you just raise this to the nth power. Right? And so, so if I have ZL of n, I just put the nth power of this character. And that appeared yesterday, for example, in Matsumoto's talk. And now, how did this arise? So yesterday, Matsumoto, he, he showed you that if you take H1 of, say, the affine line over Q minus the origin, I sh or I should say pi 1, with, say, any base point like 1, he showed you that this was isomorphic to uh, Z, and you take the L-adic, the pro-L completion, you get ZL of 1, right? So I'll show you the corresponding thing now is true in the case of uh, Hodge theory, that if you take, so example, so this guy arises naturally, so H1 of C star, so that's the same as pi 1, because pi 1's a billion. <clears throat> uh, so that's going to be at my V. I claim this is isomorphic to, in Hodge theory, to Z of 1. So Z of 1 occurs as pi 1, if you like, of C star, of the multiplicative group. Yeah. Did I do something wrong? Ah, thank you. Q bar, yes. We want geometric fundamental group. So let me explain why this is true. So let's first of all look at H1 of C star. C, well this is equal to C times dz over z. Right? dz over z is the sort of natural Durham generator. If you do abstract Hodge theory, you find out this is the harmonic representative of that class in an appropriate sense. So <clears throat> this is going to tell you, this. so we're going to say that this is equal to V11, right? It's, it's got to be, this guy's in F1 clearly, it's got 1DZ in it. So it's got to be of type 11 because we're only allowing things of type PP. And in fact, if you're worried about the other one, it comes because you've got a pole here. Poles sort of jack up the weight by one. That's why it's got weight two. But now, so this says that H... 1 C star uh, C is isomorphic to C times Z, where Z is just dual to dz over Z. So this is just the dual vector space. This is equal to 1. Okay? And so this guy here will be, and so this is going to be equal to V minus 1 minus 1. <clears throat> and now, what's the integral structure here? Well, the integral structure will be H1 of C star Z, and we have to map it into CZ. And how do we map it in? So some path sigma, let me choose a nice path, a loop. So, yeah, for me, sigma is usually an element in pi 1, and for all the Galois theorists, it's usually an element of the Galois group. So I just did, did this to confuse you. 
But okay, so we take this generator here, sigma, it will go to the integral of, well, you evaluate the dual basis on it over sigma times z. But what's this equal to? It's just equal to 2 pi i z. And that's sort of the, the hint that, that this is good bookkeeping to put the 2 pi i in here. <clears throat> Okay, so this tells you that this, this is the Hodge version of what Matsumoto did yesterday. Um, hmm. All right, so I'm going to make a few remarks about properties and So um, one is, what's a morphism? So you've got a V and you've got a V prime. So what's a morphism from one mixed hot state, state structure to another? First of all, uh, so a morphism is one, it's a map from the underlying. So I usually use V as sort of a generic thing that represents the whole bundle. And maybe here just to emphasize this, you have a, a map on the, the the corresponding lattices underneath. Two, you require that uh, if you, you map VQ into V prime Q, this preserves the weight filtration. And the third thing is that the map from VC into VC prime preserves the Hodge filtration. And if you think about it, these two together, this is equivalent to saying that uh, phi C preserves the bi-grading VPP. This gets carried into V prime PP. Right? So the bi in other words, the bi-grading is preserved. And that's maybe psychologically the easiest way. And I'm going to make a couple of quick remarks. The category of filtered vector spaces is not abelian. This is shock to some people, but it's, it's trivial. If you take a filtration, take, take a fixed vector space like R3 and filter it in your favorite way. Now just define a new filtration by renumbering that by shifting it one way to the right or something. Now look at the identity. It's filtration preserving. So it's monic, it's epic, but it's not an isomorphism. But so the next fact I'm about to state then should surprise you a little bit Although in the Tate case, which we're in, it's, um, it's pretty clear. Uh, the category of mixed Hodge Tate structures, say, over lambda, is abelian. It should be slightly surprising because it's defined in terms of um, filtration preserving maps, but We've seen here it's equivalent to saying these maps are bi-graded, <laughs> and graded maps are actually uh, they f maps of graded vector spaces form an abelian category. Um, it's actually, um, and the functors, I'll just say this here, G R W dot and G R dot F are exact. <laughs> so these are incredibly useful properties formally. And I'm not going to use them, but um, so what does this mean? So G R W M, for example, of V is defined by definition, actually I should put 2M, is W 2M of V mod W 2M minus 2 of V. Right. And so every one of these preserves exact sequences. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> and of course, this takes values in Q vector spaces and this takes values in C vector spaces. And I should say that that theorem would not be true if you try to define the weight. The reason why the weight filtration is defined over Q is if, if you try to define it over Z, you don't get an abelian category. It's easy to play with that, but I won't. <clears throat> OK, so let's, uh, we also have tensor products and HOMs. 
And so what's uh, so so you can tensor together two of these guys is a mixed Hodge Tate structure, and so is Hom. Just Hom V V prime. If V and V prime are mixed Hodge Tate structures, so is their tensor product. And the easiest way to do it is you know how to tensor graded vector spaces. Do that and use that to define the filtrations. I wrote it out in a more complicated way in the notes, but just use the grading to deduce these guys here. And in, for example, um, say Zn is just equal to Z of 1 tensor n, for example. And Z of minus 1 is equal to hom Z of 1. And if I just write Z, I mean Z of 0. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. So let me talk about periods. <coughs> so. So the basic problem here is suppose you had a mixed Hodge-Tate structure here. Say, let's just look at it like this. Suppose it's an extension of z of 0 by z of 1, meaning you've got this is an exact sequence in the category. So it's an exact sequence of the underlying z modules. And everything here is a morphism of mixed Hodge structures. What can you say about v, right? And it turns out that there's that well, the set of these guys is called x1 Hodge z, z of 1 is, iso is that if naturally isomorphic to C, uh, C star. Right, so I want to explain this. And it, in fact, the periods tell you which extension you have. And what people are interested in, and maybe I'll try to explain this tomorrow. I mean, somehow there's some history behind all of these talks that hasn't been explained that's sort of buried in the introduction to Deline's paper on P1 minus 0 and an infinity. Basically, there are certain extensions, say, of Z by Zn that arise from K-theory. And you get a Hodge version and a Natal version and so on. And people want to realize those in a uniform way. They believe there was some sort of motivic avatar from which these things came. And historically, they were all constructed by looking at the motivic structure on the fundamental group of P1 minus 0, 1, and infinity. And in fact, what if, I combine, if you combine what Matsumoto did yesterday with what I do tomorrow, we will have more or less proved that. But I, maybe I'll try to explain that. So these, these things are important. There's non-trivial extensions inside the mixed Hodge structure on pi 1. And in fact, it's a, conjecturally, these are all the non-trivial extensions you get, all the non-trivial periods of mixed state motives over spec z occur in the fundamental group of p1 minus 0, 1, and infinity. And they're all connected with mixed zeta numbers. So that, that's somehow why we're all sort of thumping on our chests about the Trinfeld associator and these mixed zeta numbers. OK, multiple zeta numbers, sorry. OK, so what about, so let's try a more general problem. We're going to suppose that, that uh, G, R, W, 2, M of V, suppose have uh, V, which is a mixed Hodge Tate structure, <coughs> uh, or a lambda mixed Hodge Tate structure, such that, um, now I'm going to be sloppy here. You ca can't quite do this, but I'll do it anyway say is it's going to be a direct sum of RM copies of this guy here. So so VC we know is a direct sum of VMM. So VMM the dimension of VMM is the dimension the rank of the 2 mth graded quotient here. Uh, sorry? 
Well, now here I just do this, m can be negative, but I really want to put dim, this is where the negative needs to go, is equal to rm, right? Because, sorry? Ah, minus 2m, thank you. Do I have that wrong in the notes? No, I've got it right in the notes. Okay, so, thank you. Because this is weight minus 2m, right? Yeah, we're supposing this here. And if you like, assume the lattice is torsion free. I mean, we can do it with lambda equals q and there's going to be no issues here. And so let's choose a basis of this guy here. So we're going to choose, uh, we're going to choose a basis uh, E1M, ERM, M of V minus M minus M. So this is a complex basis such that, um, such that the lattice uh, underlying GR W minus 2M V lambda is, it's going to be 2 pi I to the M E 1 M. You just multiply all these guys by 2 pi I to the M. Right? It's just because of the convention of the way that 2 pi I to the M occurs in the definition of this guy. <laughs> <clears throat> and so, sometimes this 2 pi i is annoying, but ultimately it's very good to have it in there, and there are sort of cosmic reasons for doing that. So we know that w minus 2m v lambda subjects onto grw minus 2m of v lambda. And so we have this basis here, these guys here, so this is, we're going to choose here a basis of this, uh, V1M, VRM, uh, M, such that VJM goes to uh, E to the, sorry, 2 pi I to the M times EJM, right? So it, it hits these this integral basis, we have the graded quotient. So we've sort of lifted this lambda basis of the graded quotient to a set of linearly independent vectors in here. And now I claim that, <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is choose bases well adapted to the filtrations. And so the basis I'm going to have of the complex guy is going to be these guys, and the basis I have of the lambda guys is going to be these ones here, where we let m vary. Now if you write down so I'm going to set EM, boldface, equals E1M, E2M, and so on. So it's just a vector of basis vectors, right? And I'll set VM equals V1M, V2M, and so on. <coughs> That's a so what we're trying to do is calculate the periods. We want to compare the various bases, this one which is adapted to both the Hodge and weight filtration, and this one which is adapted. So this one is a basis adapted to F dot and W dot of VC, and this is a basis adapted to W dot and the lambda structure of VQ and V lambda. And I'm sort of moderately contradicting myself before what I said before, that you can't define the weight filtration over lambda. You can define one that works for this, but you can't define a natural one. There's some choices to be made. All right, so, uh, and I want to put a transpose on all of this. I want to think of these as column vectors. And now if you write down the matrix which compares these, you get V0, V1, V2, you can form a big column vector here. If you think about the way the filtrations are, this is going to be some big matrix <coughs> here times E0, E1, E2. So these are the, whoops, this should be a, 
And what does the, the matrix look like? It'll be a whole bunch of stuff. And then here, corresponding to V0, we'll get an identity matrix of size R0. One slot down further, we'll get an identity 2 pi i times an identity matrix of size R1. Down here, we'll get 2 pi i squared times an identity matrix of size R2. We'll get a whole bunch of junk up here and zero down here because both bases are adapted to the weight filtration. <clears throat> now, these guys here are called the periods. So they tell you how the lambda structure differs from the, the Hodge filtration in a way that sort of respects the weight filtration. They're telling you how, how these two bases, di bases differ. Okay, so this will become clear in a little bit. So, yeah, that's well. What I want to say is that, say, v zero here is a linear. It's so something in here is it plus some of these e's of lower weight. See, this has got weight minus two, minus four, minus six, right? So. Right, when I multiply this, I get that anything in here will be the sum, the start out the right way, so V01 will be E01 plus stuff of lower weight. I'll do an example after this. All right, maybe I should just cut this short. You say, what's the ambiguity here? The ambiguity is in how you chose this basis here. If, if you fix the E basis here, and what are the choices here? It'll be given by some sort of group of upper triangular matrices defined over lambda. And I'm going to say the set of all mixed Hodge structures, mixed Hodge tape structures with these graded quotients. The same graded quotients as our original V is going to be equal to some G lambda mod the set of these matrices of this form here. So M lambda is going to be the set of all matrices of this form. And G lambda is going to be the group that is going to be all automorphic. So this is just um, the phi in ORT V lambda such that phi preserves W dot, preserves the weight filtration. And so this is the set of all mixed hard structures of this kind. And now that's a very simple example. And so maybe we shouldn't get too bogged down in this. The simplest example is say, let's take V equals Z0 plus Z of 1. So it's, and so you're asking, what are all the mixed hard structures? Or maybe I'll make it Z0 plus Z of N. And let's take N to be bigger than 0. What are all the mixed hard structures with these their weight graded quotients? So the matrix here, you'll have an E0, a single E0, a single E1. This guy's got type minus 1, minus 1. It's got type 0, 0. And then you'll have your integral basis will be a V0 and a V1. And now the V0 is going to be E0 plus some number. Plus, I'll just put uh, U here. It'll be plus some multiple of E1. And V1, it's the, it, this is going to be the sub. This is the lower weight part. It's going to be 0, and you'll get a 2 pi i. Because this V1, sorry, these are supposed to be subscripts, it's going to be 2 pi i times Z1. Because Z of 1 is a sub. It's the lower weight part. So I'm going to, maybe I should say, we've got Zn maps to V, maps, well, maps to V prime, maps to Z0. We're trying to look at all of these. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I keep thinking on. Right. And now you think about what happens if you change this lift here. You can only change this by a some integer multiple of this guy, right? So this is saying that u is a complex number, well-defined modulo inter integer multiples of this. And that's what that's what we're sort of doing up here. The set of these matrices modulo doing lambda row operations on this that preserve the shape of the matrix. So what you see is the, the moduli space here. So it's going to be, in fact, x, I'm being slightly sloppy, but x1 hodge, z, 
Zn so is equal to C mod 2 pi i to the nz. And let me do one very special case. Boy, I'm running over time. I'm going to have to stop here. Let me just do. So example, x. I guess the union's going to get me on this one, uh, Hodge. So we're all threatening to go on strike for long hours. So this is equal to c mod 2 pi i z. And this is via the exponential map, this is c star. Right? And you should compare this with h1 of whatever, correct me if I'm wrong. So here, uh, <clears throat> right, so it should be, say, z of 1. Isn't this just, say, q cross? Is that right? Did I get it right, wrong? Sorry? What if I put, well, anyway, I'll let you guys. But, it, but this is the analogous statement because group cohomology tells you extensions of z by z of 1. Right? So, so this is the analogous Hodge theoretic statement. And you can sort of see why you may want to be able to compare extensions of Hodge structures by extensions of, by Galois extensions, why you can talk about them in a uniform way. So I'll stop here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>